All right. So welcome, everybody. I thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Ranjani Rangan, and I work in Charm Health Marketing. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know Charm Health, Charm Health is an award-winning provider of a cloud-based EHR practice management and medical billing solution that helps healthcare organizations. Um, and uh, a little bit about today, but before we go there, we are getting ready for our in-person Charmalot conference coming up December 9th and 10th. I hope many of you have thought about coming. It is an amazing conference. And um, this presentation is very timely with respect to the content. Uh, we'll be talking about artificial intelligence and technology. Uh, we'll also be talking about the Charmalot conference uh, shortly, and we have a special coupon for all of you. Um, and this coupon, um, essentially is probably one of our guest best coupons that we've ever offered. So stay tuned for that. Uh, today's presentation we're presenting in a very hot area. Um, it's artificial intelligence and healthcare technologies and applications. And, um, you know, I, I'm sure you all know, you see Tesla's everywhere. We're using AI and robotics, you know, self-driving cars, as well as other industries such as finance, marketing and manufacturing. But one area where AI is really making its mark is in healthcare. And so I'm really excited for this presentation. Um, uh, today, we have Ramesh Donta, who will be presenting for us. Um, it's someone that I happen to meet at a Charmalot conference, so very fortunate for that. Um, hi, Ramesh. Hey, hi, Ranjini. Yeah. Um, you are a serial entrepreneur, and um, you have been very generous in sharing a lot of your expertise, um, having published several best-selling books and bringing some amazing hosts on your top 250-ranked podcasts um, and I'm, I, if you have, yeah, you, I see that they're, they're listed here, Data Transformers, Global Top 250 Podcast in Tech. Yeah, some of these are great podcasts and you have some amazing hosts. I listen to many of your podcasts, very informative. You're also an angel investor and uh, you are the founder and CEO of Digital Transformation Pro and you help organizations effectively use latest technologies such as AI and IoT and leverage data as an asset to their organizations. Um, just before we, uh, I hand it over to you, Ramesh, I just wanted to go over a little bit of housekeeping. Um, yeah, you all can ask your questions anytime during the presentation. We will take your present, your questions during the presentation. Um, so go ahead and type your questions into the question box on your Zoom control panel. And I can bring them up, um, to Ramesh as he's presenting. Now, without further ado, uh, I will turn this over to Ramesh. And um, okay, there thank you, you Ranjini. Thank you, I'm uh, very thrilled to uh, be in this webinar presenting, and uh, these are the topics that uh, I'm very passionate about: uh, artificial in intelligence and how it gets applied in different fields. And uh, so, by the way, so my contact information is there. If you have any questions afterwards, so feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn, so if you can send a connection request, I will never refuse a connection request from any of my attendees. So with that, um, uh, as Anjani said, uh, I prefer to take the questions as they come along, uh, as opposed to uh, keep them waiting until the end to make it interactive. So and then that uh, I can take the discussion in the direction that you want, as opposed to you know some direction that you may not want. So with that, so this is what we have for today. Um, first, uh, the very basics of artificial intelligence and machine learning, right? So uh, many times we hear these terms and everybody has different perspective, uh, different take on this terminology. I just want us to uh, get grounded on what we are talking about. And after that, uh, we'll get into specific technologies uh, that have come about in the last few years and how they're reshaping different industries and then how they apply to healthcare itself. And then uh, we will get into some healthcare applications and any Q&A uh, that we have not taken as they have come along, uh, we'll be uh, taking them towards the end. So, and then uh, on the previous uh, slide, uh, you may have seen there are a couple of books, uh, which is a primer uh, to AI. It's, it's a basic primer, uh, something that I want to talk to my mother about what it is. Uh, it's almost to that level uh, where if she asks me what it is, or and then the, the glossary in terms of what is A to Z kind of things. So these are all free eBooks. Uh, if you send me a note, uh, I will send them over to you. So, so, and I'll, I'll remind you again towards the end. 
So with that, so let me uh, get into the discussion itself. So what are we talking about? Artificial intelligence. Um, and uh, so basically I'll give you a theoretical definition of how it is said and then my interpretation of it, right? It's essentially a field concerned with producing machines or training machines, right? Producing machines is the robots. Uh, training machines, so they take any computer, you train it uh, to do what? To autonomously, that's in a self-controlling, uh, perform tasks that would normally require human intelligence. So what are these tasks? These are things like ability to perceive, ability to learn, and ability to reason and ability to interact and ability to abstract. So those are all the five different terms that relate to the intelligence. And um, when it comes to applications, we are primarily talking about perceiving and learning uh, and maybe reason, but not necessarily interact and abstract because the, uh, the artificial intelligence itself has uh, you know, multiple levels. One is called a narrow intelligence uh, and there's a general intelligence and there's a super intelligence, right? So the, the varying levels were equate to the human intelligence, but primarily we are talking about uh, the artificial narrow intelligence ability to perceive and learn. That's what AI, uh, that's the scope of the AI. The second one is machine learning, right? So this is also talked in the context of AI, AML, uh, as a matter of fact. So what is this about? Uh, this, this is about letting the computers recognize patterns and trends, right? So, so now it makes it very specific. So we are looking for patterns and trends in the data that's already there, right? So it could be historical data, the new data that we add and generate predictions. So then what are we going to, you know, once we identify the patterns and trends, what do we do with them? So ability to predict what might happen, okay? So that is what machine learning is about based on the, uh, the data that is fed into it. So, Again, um, so there are two main things we talk about. One is the data. The other one is the algorithm or the models. Th those are the two things that, that feed into this field. So if we feed wrong data, then you get wrong predictions. Um, and if the algorithm is not written properly and it does, it does not learn or evolve over a period of time, it might be giving stale predictions. So those are the things that we have to keep in the context while we are discussing the applications. Okay. The other terms that you might be hearing is the deep learning is again a subset of machine learning, uh, neural networks and those things. And then the other one is the natural language processing. The NLP is the one that has really taken off much more recently with the large data sets that are available from you know, Google's and these big uh, large companies that are now publicly available. And that this, these are kind of shaping um, the field. Okay, so again, uh, if any questions that are there, please feel free to go ahead and uh, uh, you know ask me. So before I go into this question, so Ranjani, do you want to launch that question, uh, the poll, to just to see uh, where the, our audience are with respect to how they are thinking about AI? Absolutely, yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and launch a poll, just understanding your concerns with respect to AI. Here we go. So basically the, the poll is what are your biggest concerns employing some kind of AI technology in your practice? So go ahead and uh, so that gives me some an idea of where you're coming from. So while you're uh, doing that poll, so these are the questions we all have about healthcare AI, right? So to get, before I started this webinar, Ranjani was asking, what are we going to address in this one? So how real is healthcare AI? You know, is it one of those hyped up terms, hyped up fields like in the past, uh, but, or is it real? Right? Are there applications in the marketplace that I can use if I'm a practitioner? If it is real, what are the tangible benefits if I adopt these technologies into my practice? Right? So where would I derive the benefits? And how easy or difficult is it to implement this application? Sure, there are out there, but if it takes me two months or I need a PhD in this area to implement these things, you know, I may not do it, right? So, and then how do I evaluate? I'm, I'm a business I'm a practitioner, but we are here to make money. So, um, and there, there are multiple options of the applications. How do I evaluate these applications? Which one I should consider? And how much do these applications cost? And where is the ROI? Um, and so we will be addressing these questions as we go along. And so here, my intent is not necessarily to come and you know, say, you know, wow, this is the next best thing since sliced bread. Um, you know, you have to look at it. No, that's not what I'm uh, intending to do. I'm just trying to strike a balance between, you know, what are the applications that are available now? 
and what are coming uh, and then give a realistic perspective of what we can do with them. Okay, so okay. that is my intent. Sure, and, Ramesh. Uh, with these questions, so let's uh, get into the, the subject matter. Yeah, Ramesh, can I share the results of the poll? Yes, please. So Investment returns concerns 71%, okay? Yeah. Privacy issues, 14%. Malicious use of AI, 14%. Okay, so this is kind of expected. So primarily people are concerned about the return on investment. Um, okay, so we will, I'll try to address them as we go along. Anything else, Ranjani, you want to say about that? Uh, no, that's, that? that's it. Wonderful. Okay, got it. So the majority of the concern is return on investment. And here I'll be spending on this. This is a little bit of an eye chart. Please bear with me. But um, but in my opinion, this gives a larger context to the overall topic. And the source of this slide is American Medical Association. I think they have done a fantastic job of laying out the healthcare. Because healthcare, as you know, is a very broad field, right? So in this particular slide, what you see is the top box is the capability, the AI capability, the technology, right? We will not be spending too much time on that one. It is just... FYI, that the NLP I talked about, natural language processing, and there's a machine learning aspect of it. And there are other things, computer vision. And, you know, so I'll not be going too deep into it, but just for you to be aware of it, somebody is talking about these terms, you know, at, at uh, the cooler, at least you have a context to what these terms are. Okay. And then the bottom box is where we'll be spending most of the time. So what do we have in the, the, uh, the uh, what, six or seven of these columns, right? So disease prevention, disease diagnosis, disease treatment and monitoring, care delivery support, healthcare administration, patient engagement, and research and development. So these are the broad areas in the healthcare where investments are going in, where people recognize hospitals, clinics, practitioners, they recognize you know, what they're, where they're operating, right? So research and development, the drug discovery that's going on there. And if you're a practitioner, you're probably, you're concerned about treatment and monitoring. And then of course, as an administrator, you do healthcare administration. So these are all the broad areas. So the artificial intelligence, this uh, applications, they're available in each of these areas. So what I have done, what are the red boxes? So what I have done is, so I picked the four I thought most relevant to the audience for today's webinar, given where Charm Health customers and stakeholders coming from. So um, I thought these four top topics may be more relevant for today's discussion. These are disease diagnosis, disease treatment and monitoring, healthcare administration, and patient engagement. If you have interest in any other areas, please go ahead and uh, put it in the chat. So I know I can connect with you offline, but today's material I'm covering these four boxes. And then second, uh, the uh, number two reason why I picked these areas is I believe these are the areas where they are, I don't want to say it's a, it's a faster ROI, but there is a, from practitioner's perspective, this is where the ROI is there. And the discussion is also, I have structured that the low hanging fruits are, are, are followed by the more difficult ones to realize. Okay, so the very first one, you will see the patient engagement and customer experience. And that is where most, uh, I think, easier to, uh, to kick the tires of AI uh, in, your, in your clinics or practices in the field that you're operating. Okay, so if you have any questions about this one, uh, let me know. And uh, I, I might come back to this slide later on just to give a context. So the very first one is the patient engagement is where I will be going into, okay? So patient engagement and customer service, I believe um, is an easier not to crack. That's something easier uh, to implement, especially if your EHR provides some kind of ex extension to these areas. So things that you might have already heard about, chatbots, Right, so these are there are companies out there who specialize in chatbots, or there are you know a, a particular platform who might provide a chatbot as an ex extension. Right, so I will talk a little bit more about that one in a second. And then um, 
real time patient and vitals monitoring, right? So this is where, where it could be the IV drip or monitoring or whatever. So where a nurse has to do multiple patients. So you could put some intelligence into the monitoring device or that capability of the application uh, to put some limits as to, you know, trigger, you know, beyond the threshold. So you can, you can st add, start adding intelligence into this monitoring itself. Uh, there are applications that uh, make this possible. And then virtual nursing assistants, right? So these are again, so we, we heard about, uh, you know, the, the chatbot is one kind of an assistant, but the virtual nursing assistant takes it to a next level, uh, incorporates medical intelligence into the nursing assistant to provide the help to the patient. So uh, there are companies, again, these solution providers that I'm giving, so this is a representative sample to let you know that there are applications out there. We're not talking about a theory here. We are talking about practical applications, number one. Number two, I'm not recommending any of these applications. Though these are just a representative sample. Whatever I show here, uh, I'm not representing them. I, it's not meant to tell you that you have to use them, but these are there to give you examples, okay? So NurseWise, the one is a virtual nursing assistant. Babylon is, it, uh, comes out of UK. Um, you know, provides assistance as well. So uh, let me give you a few examples here. So th these are the screenshot examples. So let me start with the UC Health Livy chatbot for patient engagement, right? This is something that's been uh, there. So you could look at it. And if you look at the screenshot, it, it uh, starts off with, uh, you know, what kind of help you need. And then um, why is it AI driven? So over a period of time, these chatbots they learn the terms that are used, right? So uh, even initially it might have a certain uh, data set, but over a period of time, these data sets will keep increasing because the chatbots are learning from each engagement, each experience, and then they get better at providing help. And uh, the one uh, right next to it is uh, on the right-hand side, a symptomate is a symptom checking chatbot. There are quite a few of them in the symptom checking uh, chatbots. If you put in your uh, symptoms, um, they will, uh, the, the chatbots kind of give you recommendations, the different options that you could take. And then appointment scheduler chatbot, right? This is pretty common. Uh, this is, you could uh, schedule your appointments with, with a chatbot. And uh, there's a virtual nursing assistant when the power of AI voice made angel. It's, it's from a company. So it provides you, um, you know, different care options uh, as a nursing assistant. And then there's a medication reminder chatbot, right? So then we all have medications, we forget, but these chatbots, um, you know, once you feed the schedules and all that stuff, they will uh, uh, remind you. And then that helps with uh, you know, the, you know, definitely for patients to take the medicine, but also it helps the practitioner so that the patients are taking the medic medications, uh, you know, uh, as prescribed at the time and the amounts, uh, and then that helps the practitioner as, as well to take care of the patients. So the, the chatbots are the nursing assistants are the remote patient monitoring kind of things that are one of the ones that are, you know, being used quite often uh, from an AI perspective. Again, if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, let me know. So now let me go into the second area, uh, diagnostics. And this gets lots of press, lots of uh, PR. And so what are we talking about? Here, um, this, these algorithms uh, you know, help the, assist the practitioners uh, you know, with analysis. Right, they are not meant. There is not a single case that I have seen where they're meant to replace a practitioner. That is not what it is, but to augment, you know, provide help to the practitioners. Right, ML-based radiology analysis, abnormality detection. So especially you have a lot of uh, data that is there. You know, you can recognize, remember the patterns that I talked about, and then you can also look at some of the scans and then have an earlier cancer detection. And uh, for example, uh, you know, here you might see Google's uh, DeepMind uh, uh, has done some research here and it came up that it was able to uh, earlier detect this cancer earlier, right? There are companies out there, Viz.ai, Path AI. Uh, I have some examples in the next slide, but these are all there. They are helping uh, with the radiology analysis and figuring out abnormalities or you know, larger sets of data, process them in a faster way. So the throughput is there 
Um, so uh, those are the kinds of uh, areas that it's helping. And here, uh, let me also talk about one personal um, example that I know, and a gentleman that I had as a guest on one of my podcasts, you know, so during COVID, so he gave me this example of where a, a patient uh, has to wait uh, when they take the COVID test, especially having severe symptoms, and then they have to wait for 24 hours or maybe you know, longer to get the results back. Uh, but what these guys have done is they have analyzed the chest x-rays of 70,000 patients. They have fed the data into this uh, and then created an AI uh, model with, the, uh, of course, the doctor's uh, recommendations, all that stuff. And they were able to figure out that if you put a chest x-ray of the patient that came in based on the data they already have, based on the algorithms they've put in, so within 95% accuracy, um, within an, uh, less than an hour, they can uh, figure out if a person has a COVID or not. And that helped out uh, because especially severe symptoms, uh, you don't have to wait for 24 hours, if especially they have to be admitted into you know, and get a treatment right away. So those are the areas that um, this AI driven applications are helping out um, in this area. So for example, the Wiz.ai, intelligent care coordination. So automatic AI powered detection of suspected aneurysms. That's what they're focusing on. Uh, capture all suspected aneurysm patients and refer to clinic for follow-up and secure HIPAA compliant. Again, this is important, right? The, in the healthcare, these have to be uh, the, the compliant with certain guidelines. And they are, uh, of course, talking about how they are compliant. Path AI. So you might see a lot of uh, press on this one, uh, pathology specific, transforming research, clinical development, and with AI-powered pathology. And the one below is analytic. It's again, it has a database of diagnostic images and what they're claiming is a reduced mouse mileage uh, four times and two to five X return on investment, right? 20 to four, uh, 43 seconds saved years per study. Each of the study it's saving. And uh, some of them even claim, uh, you know, the accuracy, okay? And all of these from what I've seen um, are there to assist the providers, not uh, not a single case that I've seen where uh, you could say, hey, no, it's replaced, we don't need that. So, I mean, that's where these are helping. Okay, so now uh, let me go into uh, next question, uh, ne next area, healthcare administration. And by, by the way, this area, see, so far what we have seen is the clinical side, right? So whether diagnose, uh, diagnostic help or whether it's even a patient care, um, especially like a nursing assistant kind of thing. It's all the clinical side. But, you know, there are studies out there, the health healthcare administration costs are nearly one third of the overall cost, right, of the healthcare, right? And some even said even more than that. So any technology that can help, you know, increase the efficiencies, reduce the cost in the administration would be very welcome. And uh, this is where, um, you know, AI-driven applications uh, are continuing to uh, make an impact, positive impact, and uh, so on the clinic, non-clinical side. So let's look at the use cases, what we're talking about. Claims management. So again, automation, the fraud detection is there uh, in many of the claims. And if you're an insurer, uh, uh, if you're providing insurance, your, your interest is to detect the fraud. And so they are using uh, AI-driven applications to figure out the patterns of where fraudulent claims are being made. And uh, this is already happening on the non-healthcare insurance significantly. And this is also happening the healthcare insurance as well. So claims man efficient claims management, either process more claims and then process more claims uh, to detect the fraud as well on both angles, um, like an anomaly, and uh, neutrinos, some of the applications that I mentioned here, they're being used. And the second one is the medical training, right? So there is a, a virtual patients that are their application that actually creates a virtual patient uh, with uh, the, all the, uh, the medical uh, uh, aspects are figured into the patient itself. And it uh, there to help the professionals. But at the same time, there is also a training for the uh, you know, patients as well. So these are AI driven applications that are out there, uh, like an AI tutor and, 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 and then the virtual patients. Um, and then they are helping. Uh, there is a study out there, out there I saw uh, in the radiology uh, sections, uh, and also I believe in the dentist as well, where it has significantly uh, 
you know, reduce that time for a professional to learn about the topic by using this medical training. Okay, that's one. And decision support for medical professionals. So as I mentioned, these, like when you have to process lots of information, these, uh, you know, applications are, you know, helping the, the professionals, you know, make a much more informed decision with the information that is provided by the AI driven applications. And then the next one is streamlined workflow management. This is workflow management is a very standard hospital administration. It actually is there in any enterprise. And then AI driven applications, they help, uh, you know, optimize the workflow and make the process more efficient. So there are applications out there. And efficient scheduling and better resource utilization. As you know, the scheduling of the physicians or the medical providers and the scheduling of the expensive equipment uh, itself has a cost attached to them. If it's inefficient, it, it drives cost. And uh, so this uh, intelligent uh, scheduling of these resources, whether the, uh, the human resources are, are the you know, more uh, expensive machines um, can reduce cost. So there is a belief that the AI-driven applications uh, will make a huge impact and they're beginning to already make an impact in the healthcare administration space. But it doesn't get much of a press. The clinical side is where uh, most of the press is there, but this is where it makes a real impact to the bottom line. Okay, so I talked about uh, you know, Google Brain, MI, uh, AI before, MIT pulmonary CDS. So these are all the large platforms. The data is there that can be used by many of uh, the providers. And the, one of the last one that I meant, uh, I've included in this presentation for today is the disease treatment and monitoring, right? So especially with the telehealth, with the remote health that has uh, taken over uh, during the pandemic time. So remote monitoring. And then also the machines about doing the surgery, robot assisted surgery, you, we keep hearing about it. So they fall into this category, disease treatment and monitoring, and how AI uh, and even robotics uh, can help in this area. So for example, the wearable devices that we all know, right? So smart patches and all. The, so they have initially uh, uh, are a passive monitoring. That's how they, they've started out a few years ago. But now over a period of time, they've acquired more intelligence now they're able to help. Um, for example, you have seen uh, some applications where, you know, even before you fall, uh, that the fall is detected and it helps, uh, you know, in those situations, right? So there are applications out there about stroke. So these, these are all the wearable devices and smart patches. They're acquiring more and more intelligence into them uh, to help the patients and also help the providers uh, provide better care. And the vicarious surgical or its health accuracy, all this have uh, started in, uh, incorporating robotic surgery. And uh, again, it's, it's not uh, broad based, but definitely you see cases where uh, they have thought where uh, they're augmenting, they're helping uh, the, a surgeon uh, with, with, with this robotic arms and things like that. So uh, before I go into it, so let me just stop here and then I'll see if there are any questions that I can take. Any questions, Ranjani, so far? Yeah, I don't see any questions right away, um, but feel free to ask your questions any, um, as they come. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, um, and, and then let me talk about uh, my own perspective where uh, the ROI, I mean, like how, where ROI is there and how to evaluate um, I come from a, a technology background, not a medical background. And um, when I look at a new technology, so my the number one starting point, um, looking at from any business, right? So it's like, what is the business problem that I'm trying to solve? If your practice, so your challenges are more about, let's say, uh, you, you your front-end office, right? So you want to help them out with a, in a better customer service, a patient engagement, or even you want to take, like for example, help the patient or get the information from the patient about uh, the pre-screening, pre all the stuff before they come into it. You want to improve those efficiencies, then definitely patient engagement and the customer experience side of the world is what you want to look at, right? So uh, if you are a practice, you focus on diagnosis and uh, you want to get a more throughput, uh, that uh, to augment, uh, to, to help your providers, then that's where. So whatever is the business problem that you are trying to solve, I mean, that is where I would uh, uh, 
start with that one as opposed to, hey, you know, there is a new cool technology that out there, let me start implementing because there's a cost to implementing the technology. The, the cost has to be justified uh, with a business need. Okay, that is my fundamental thing, number one. Number two is the readiness to actually accept the technology, right? So in many organizations, uh, what happens is the knowledge level or uh, the current application itself, whatever they're doing, is not in a position to accept new innovation, right? So in that case, then going to AI-driven application, it's too much of a jump, right? So that is not the right thing for you. So your, uh, your own practice ability, the people training, or other technologies that are already there, uh, can, can they work with uh, these new technologies? So that's a second consideration um, in, you, sh you should have, right? And uh, with respect to ROI, and then what I have seen, especially this comes from a large, uh, you know, practices, not, not uh, small practice, but hospitals and all of them. So there is a Pricewaterhouse study that was done uh, maybe last year or so. So what they said is that currently at this stage, there is a more cost to implement artificial intelligence than the return that's out there. Right, so that is expected. New technology, you need to train people. You need to so there is an initial cost to uh, implementing this technology and expecting a return right off the bat, like within a month or so. It's unrealistic. So there is an investment that's necessary. There is initial cost that is expected, and uh, but depending on the business problem, how severe the problem is, you you can. Uh, get a return on investment. I have seen the claims processing. Uh, there are lots of case studies out there that uh, that really help them out on the workflow uh, streams. Uh, you know, optimizing that. There are uh, there is efficient. These are on the administration side. Uh, definitely, there are case studies out there, right? So that's why. Uh, uh, let me just start summarizing here. Um, AI based applications are available now to test and deploy in your practice. So th that's a reality. They are there. Okay. And uh, if you ask me about four years ago, you know, we were not there, but right now there are a plethora of uh, choices uh, that we all have. And patient engagement and customer experience focused AI enabled are more, most widely used chatbots. And they are used not just in healthcare, by the way. So they are used in many uh, industries, uh, you know, retail, finance, and uh, other industries are also using these things and the front facing one. And diagnostic related AI applications and medical professional decision support systems are getting more traction in recent times. There's more press of it, more options that are available, right? And uh, the hospital administration applications can deliver an easy to justify with respect to ROI, which is that, hey, you know, if you're able to, if you're able to show that you're uh, reducing the cost of administering uh, care and by using AI application, that's easier to justify. Ramesh? Mm -hmm. Do you think that I could just launch a poll to see our attendees' interest in actually employing AI technology? Yeah, please go ahead. They'd like to. So how soon are you interested in employing some kind of AI technology in your practice? And go ahead, Ramesh, if you'd like to. Yeah, sure. I, I'm just uh, monitoring uh, this one as well. So right away within the next six months, 67%, within two years, um, seventeen percent, and I need some more time for research. Okay, that makes sense. Actually, it's, uh, it's, it's next six months. Awesome. Uh, sixty-seven uh, percent is uh, two thirds uh, right there. So it's a very good. And uh, and feel free to put in any your thoughts of which areas you're looking at it. Is it more a patient engagement, customer experience area, or uh, you know, so whatever is the the area. So go ahead and and then uh, put in your input into the chat if you can. They'll give me some idea. So with that, actually, um, so I will leave it for uh, the you know Q and A uh, now, Ranjini. And uh, again, I'll put my contact here and then reach out to me. So uh, if you uh, if you have any questions afterwards, uh, definitely contact me. Super. Uh, thank you so much for that very comprehensive presentation. Um, I uh, very exciting areas that um, AI is developing in the medical field. Yeah, and I understand, uh, Ramesh, it's, it's, it's hard. Like when you don't know the return on investment, it's hard to know which technologies to adopt. Uh, it's uh, definitely, yeah. you know, I think um, practitioners have been always, uh, physicians have always been, healthcare in general has been an area where, you know, in the, notoriously they say, you know, 
uh, they don't want to adopt new technologies. But I think there's a good reason for that. Yeah, there's a definitely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, many reasons, regulation, uh, regulatory reasons, the privacy reasons, I think that uh, we already heard that one. And then, uh, of course, the ROI, right? So the healthcare industry as a whole is going through some tough times post pandemic, right? Hospitals are struggling. And so given that you need to justify investment into any of those things, and um, it's easier to justify if you're reducing the cost, uh, those kinds of things, uh, that's administration side. So you could evaluate and then, but uh, you can also look at the, if you're delivering a better patient care, a patient, better patient experience, either onboarding a patient, uh, any of those things, uh, that's also um, in a good area to invest in. True, I guess at the end of the day, you know, is it improving patient outcomes? Yeah. And a patient experience, is it improving? That, those are the fundamental questions, I suppose. Yeah, so, so that's, that's, what, that's all we have for today. And uh, uh, anything else? I think you want to talk about Charm a lot, uh, Ranjini? Absolutely, thank you. absolutely. I wanted to share um, a little bit about Charm a lot. Um, I think those of you, many of you, are already familiar with Charm. Um, but as you all know, this is a two-day experience to learn all about Charm's products and from our product team. Uh, it is a wonderful event that we've been holding for several years now. It's an opportunity to connect with your peers in group settings. Um, and uh, get to know the best practices. We've got some amazing panel discussions on uh, from uh, some uh, some charm users that are kind of the um, what do you say our, our our spotlight users that have really advanced their practice using the charm platform. And we're going to be having an entrepreneurial panel uh, that discusses you know how. Um, you know, you one can explore a uh, startup, even if you have a practice and expand your practice that way. Um, it's going to be a wonderful networking opportunity. Um, you're going to get Charm Health Innovation Roadmap. And let me go ahead and share the screen a little bit. Um, yeah, please. So let's see. Let's talk to. I'm. <clears throat> Okay, let's see if this works. I'm getting a little bit of a... Are you able to share? Um, you know, I just downloaded Zoom. Oh, okay. It's asking me a specific question that may generate some issues. If that's the case, I will email it right away to everybody. And I will just go ahead and announce what the offer is. Um. So all of the new generation uh, regist registrations from this point on will receive a discount code. Um, um, the discount code is webinar 100 gift. Um, and I can go ahead and type that into right here. Armega, if you're online, go ahead. I think, let me go ahead and write it in here to all the attendees. Say webinar 100 gift. And here is the... Oops. I hope everybody received that. And so essentially this will give you 50% off for registering for Charmalot. As well, after you're registering, you will receive a hundred dollar Amazon gift card from us uh, once we receive your registration to Charmalot. So essentially your net is zero. Um, this is offer mm -hmm. offer is valid to the first 15 Charmalot registrations, uh, new Charmalot registrations only, please. Um, and you must have been registered for this webinar to receive this discount. Uh, this offer does end on Tuesday, November 22nd, 2002. Um, I hope to see many of you at the Charmalot Conference. It is also a customer appreciation event, a cross-functional networking opportunity with healthcare professionals, IT experts, billers, developers, entrepreneurs, and venture investors, all, me all meals and entertainment is um, all part of the event. So I I hope that many of you can take advantage of it. Um, with that, I wanted to know, I hope everyone received it. I will be sending that out shortly as well since I wasn't able to share my screen. Um, but um, are there any other questions? We'll go ahead and start my video. I think that would bring it a close for today. Um, thank, thank you so much, Ramesh, for that uh, very comprehensive presentation. I hope a lot of our attendees will go out and seek uh, new AI apps and technologies to incorporate, and it'll provide an inspiration for their next steps. Thank you very much, Ranjini. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'll see you all very soon.